Hey guys, Ty Streetman here, and I'm here with my wonderful friend, George Farmer. I'm a wonderful friend. You are a wonderful friend. Oh, and right. um, I'm very lucky to have you as my friend and, you know, partner in crime on lots of aquarium related stuff, so that's pretty good. It is pretty cool. And I wanted to show you this display. I think it's amazing. The, the reds are so intense. Well, it's come out really well, actually, and I'll talk about it a bit, mm. how it came together. So these are the black phantom tetras, and mm. a called megalopterus. And I really wanted to do a biotope for them. They're a species that I've seen in the wild quite a lot, except in the region where I go in Brazil, they are red. If you go 700 kilometers north to the Guacore Basin, they are black, like these guys. Mm. And the original specimens were imported by German aquarists in the 1930s, I believe. Wow. And these came from the Guacore, so that's why we have the black variety in the hobby. Mm. Go south. They're red, almost as colour as uh, surface okay. tetras. So, is it, so that, that's where you get the red phantom and the black phantom? No. Ah, we different have, species. It's, yeah, different species, but, but it's really confusing because you're like, oh, these are black phantoms, but they're red. And people say, you mean red phantoms? No, no they're black. So, so serpe, not, serpe is not red phantom white. No, okay. but it's interesting how this, the geographic separation of only 700 kilometres has rendered itself into completely different body coloration mm. and why why is that so that's something that would be you know, a great phd topic to do yeah um but you can get the black ones in the hobby and i think they're rather lovely yeah and so these have come from maidenhead aquatics at summer hill which is run by my friend james sampson and james has been really really wonderful in loaning us the fish mm. but he's also provided these fantastic plants this is kabomba ficata oh, yeah. which he ordered into his maidenhead aquatics woodbridge store and if you want it, you can order it from the store by ringing them or contacting them on Instagram or Facebook and placing an order and they can get it in for you. It's not as popular or common as it used to be in the hobby. It's quite a demanding plant. It's the most demanding of all the Cabombas. Yeah, in terms of light and CO2? Yeah, or? light, CO2, really nice acidic water and plenty of nutrients. I've found it growing in Brazil in a number of habitats. In fact, I found it growing in a cattle pond covered in slime and sludge and mud and it was only when I sort of pulled away all the detritus and algae and slime on top of it that I realised what it was. I've also found it growing in the habitat of the black neon tetra in these small black water streams but it also occurs in the Guapore basin where the black phantoms come from and so I thought hey this would be a really great chance to combine both species and I wanted to create something that was a biotope aesthetic but also quite natural what I call the fourth way natural mm. style aquarium and you may have seen recently we did one at George's place with ember tetrix which came out really really nicely with the blue angel fish with, with yeah with the blue angel fish which is a you know an artistic flair we'll put it that way <laughs> um, <laughs> I've stuck with uh, biotope correct species so apart from the black phantoms I've got a lovely pair of epistogramma Borelli in here now, they also occur in the Guapore Basin, and they're a really nice species, and I've collected them quite often in Brazil. And I've got a wonderful pair that came from Maidenhead Aquatics Woodbridge, and of course right now they're, they're hiding, because, you know, I'm talking about them. <laughs> but I thought I'd set up this biotope. And actually, it's very simple, there's very few components. I've got the, the plants, I've got a few spindly bits of wood, I've got my collection of botanicals, so seed pods, leaves, sort of twiggy bits that have been soaking in a bucket of water all winter, actually. So they went straight in. And then... Where did you get your botanicals from? So these are originally from Tannin Aquatics, mm. but you can also get them uh, from James, wonderful James, at Blackwater UK. Oh, James Sheen. James Sheen. So he's got a great range. Actually, he can stock some of the Tannin aquatic stuff as well. The substrate is slightly unusual. It's ADA Malaya soil, mm. which they don't make anymore, but which I've got two massive bins of outside, left over from the Aquatic Habitats book project. Yeah. And because it's really powdery and this sort of silty brown, I thought it'd be perfect as a biotope substrate. And what I do is, once I put the botanicals in and the plants, I gently waft the water above the substrate. This lifts a fine cloud of sediment why don't you do that now? Show people. Could probably terrorise the fish. Don't, <laughs> don't, do, don't do that now. <laughs> don't do that. Um, 
but it means that you get this lovely fine layer of sort of dust coating all over everything, which looks really authentic. Some people may not like it, but for me, that's, that's how I like it. So relatively few components. I am using CO2 because the plants on here demand it. They really won't grow without it. And I'll talk a little bit about the equipment that I'm using. Mm. Whilst you are, you're having fun there, aren't you? I love fun. That's, that's all right. You go ahead. I'm in my zone, mate. You do it. You crack on. So the tank is a Wazi Scape Line 600. I'm really, really grateful to Wazi because I made a pitch to them and said, look, would you... Would you give me a tank for me to do kind of biotope related setups and I'll feature them? And they very kindly said yes and sent me this wonderful uh, Scape Line 600, which is really nice. It's uh, Scape Line 60. 60, sorry. It's um, 60 centimeters. We must have a 600. Are we good to have a 60? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. um, and then it's, it's 36 tall, but it's. No, it's. It's 60 centimetres long, it's 35 by 35. So it's, uh, yeah, it's 14, really nice. 14 inches, 14 inches, 24 inches. There you go, what George 75 said. 75 litres, 20 US gallons. Very great, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm glad that someone is an expert here. <laughs> and um, I really like this size, actually, slightly more depth front to back than the, only 5 centimetres than the classic 60p layout. But I don't know, it, it, it gives a bit more depth to it, it makes it really nice. And it's on a lovely cabinet, which yeah, has a, sl a pull-out yeah. sliding bit. Yeah, really the filter. Really yeah. Like the yeah. So the lighting. Oh, sorry, I'll go on. The in the cabinet is a Wazi Biomaster three hundred and fifty, yep. which has the uh, Biomaster Thermo has the heater inside it. Mm -hmm. So minimal stuff in the tank. Really, really efficient. Great quiet filter. Mm. I'm using. A uh, Aqua Rio pipework. This is the Perspex pipework with a little built in CO2 diffuser. It's really cool, like straight on the outlet, so yeah. maximum like uh, circulation. Yeah. It's almost the equivalent, it's, it's like a hybrid of an internal diffuser with an external. Yeah. So you're getting the circulation of the external, but the ease of an internal. Because otherwise, you have to like take the pipes apart and all that to clean it. And these come from aquarium gardens, which yeah. are great little kits and you can easily clean this pipe work the way to do it is you take it out you put it into a solution of one th one third thin bleach two thirds water 15 minutes then you can clean them with your pipe brushes and then you put them into a solution of water with the chlorinator mm -hmm. which neutralizes the bleach for 20 minutes or so mm -hmm. and then it's safe to put back in your tank mm -hmm. because they're nice and clear minimal impact but they're not glass so it's not as easy to break them, which I always do with glass ones. Not quite as lovely as glass. Though. Not quite as lovely as glass. It's like but a frosty. Yeah, it does after, after a while. A while yeah. The light is actually on loan to me from Pete at Riverwood Aquatics. Mm -hmm. And now this is the Chihiros Vivid RGB2, RGB2, which is really nice, actually. It brings out the colours wonderfully. Yeah. And... Have you programmed it to make it more red? No, I, I haven't got the program. I just plugged it's it in. Just straight from the yeah. box. Yeah. And wow. so you can get these lights from Reward Aquatics. And as I always say, one of the reasons to get from Pete is because it's got the pay in three installments on Klarna, which means if you want an expensive light, you can pay for it over the three months. That's interesting. Makes life easier. Yeah, yeah. Is that interest free then, the Klarna? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So that's why for sort of Chihiro stuff, I, was, I will go to Pete because of that. And also, he's a lovely guy. So. That makes it easy to... Uh, yeah, he's a lovely guy. I'd like to support the small independent um, as well as the, you know, the other supporters. On the back of the tank is a light ground light panel. Uh, this is actually George's. I'm, I'm borrowing it. And we've got a gradient foil, green to yellow, which is another light ground product. And it gives it this sort of quite warm mm. feeling and a sense of depth. I didn't want to use the orange to, to sort of a yellow foil although that would accentuate the black water effect. It is a bit brooding. A hint of green is actually more natural when I snorkel in the streams in the Pantanal and in this region. The water up near the surface has a really sort of greeny mm. vibe to it. So it's, it's quite a natural look. Now, yeah. Is it kind of, yeah. Yeah. This is exactly, like, I'll put up a video to try and show people, but this yeah. is really quite similar to what I would see in the wild. I've tried to... Um, not do the planting in too 
you know, too regimented, too, regimented, too much of a garden style. Mm. And in the wild, I've found kabomba, like I said, sometimes growing in muddy cattle ponds, sometimes growing one or two stems in a slower part of the stream. And I have found it in a crystal clear stream in the Pantanal, but there was just one tiny head growing on the, on the, water, on the riverbed. And this is because this plant spreads by, germinates by seed. And it's not very common that all the seeds land in the same place and germinate together at the same time. So it's not so common to see very, very dense uh, bushes of this stuff. So when you do, it's quite nice. And it's more natural if it's a bit more spindly, there's a few more gaps in there, and the fish can move through it. The bits of wood I've used in here are originally from aquarium gardens, which I think we used for the book project, were kindly sponsored by Dave. And he helps the scaping as well on, on a lot of the setups. Oh, he did, he did so much. I'm not sure, is there anything else I've missed? Uh, What's the floating plants? Ah, yeah. So the floating plants are Salvinia auriculata, which is the, the smaller one. Yeah. And then the larger one is uh, Frogbit, that's from Woodbridge, Maidenhead Aquatics Woodbridge. So a giant frogbit, I guess. Yeah, it's like a, a very large one. Yeah, yeah. Um, both plants, you know, found in the tropics, quite cosmopolitan. <clears throat> I have a few in there just to diffuse the light a little bit, yeah. provide some surface cover so the fish feel more secure. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't let it get too dense because the kabomba yeah, yeah. would not. Would not yeah, it's, in, it's interesting. The light's 74 watts, which is bright for yeah. a 60 centimetre light. I mean, a regular twin star is like 45, so okay. it's, you know, one and a half at least times as powerful. But it really does the job very yeah, well yeah, yeah. and very pleased with it. And I think the vibe was to have something warm and mellow, quite engaging, something that was clearly a, a sort of natural aesthetic, yeah. but wasn't dull, you know, just brown and brown and brown. I wanted something to pop. It's really interesting. It's, it's one of my favourites that you've done yeah. in a long time, actually, well, I'm especially for a 60. What's, um, what sort of maintenance do you do on it? So I do water change uh, so far. So once a week, the new water change is at 50%. Mm -hmm. I use rainwater as well as tap water. Mm. Rainwater is cold and the tap water is warm. So I mix the two. And then every week I clean the glass. Uh, every couple of weeks or a month, I clean the pipe work. Pre filter. Pre filter every two weeks mm -hmm. because there's not a lot of no. detritus going in here. Yeah, yeah. And the filters for once a month, the whole filter gets a proper clean out. What fish are you feeding? Uh, food are you feeding the fish? I'm feeding a mixture of stuff, but I've got some of the. NT Labs. Yeah, this was granules. I'm using them at the moment. NT Labs food. Yeah, I've got I, a micro crumb and a probiotic. I use it because I've got it. Yeah. Um, I'll throw some in there now. Let's see. And they, they, they seem to appreciate it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And I really love watching these fish because at first glance, you see, often you'll see them in the stores, black phantoms. They look a bit washed out. Yeah. They don't have a lot of colour to them. However, once you've got them settled, the females get this lovely sort of reddish tinge to them. The males have this blue, black, purple in the body, yeah. particularly when they catch the light. There's a few. There's a really big male at the back who doesn't want to come out. He's in full display mode right now. Is it when really, really like a red fin? Yeah, he's sort of inky black colour. So the male's bigger? The males get larger. Yeah. Um, deep, deeper body, really. Is that the same with most fish? Uh, most most tetras, the females are chunkier. Yeah. But black phantoms, it seems to be. Is that really? The males, yeah, yeah. but even the even the juvenile yeah. males, you can see them. They're already showing off to the females, mm. and the constant sort of dancing act between them is really fun to watch. Sort of shimmying, showing off. And my cat come in. And she went. Let me pick her up. <laughs> she? She's quite nervy. Yeah. It's my yeah. Brazilian cat. They hang out at sort of lower levels, mid levels. They really appreciate some cover, but they're. Very peaceable. You can keep them with loads of other tetras. In the wild, you find them with Serpe tetras, Rathbun's tetras, all sorts of black, black neons you can find them with. Yeah. And then the Epistogramma Borelli, two of the more, one of the more peaceful mm -hmm. Epistogramma species. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. And they sort of move over the bottom. They're always foraging. They add, add a bit of life, you know, mm -hmm. amongst the leaf litter. Mm -hmm. But you could use this tank as a template for loads of stuff. So you could put in Corridor has status, you could put in the Serge Tetras, Hypersporic and Alakis, you could have Serpe Tetras, you know, there's mm. a lot you could do with this display. What if you wanted something in the top third? 
fish wise. Yeah, that would suit this habitat. What would you so go, go, go for? The Rathbun's Tetra is Aphiocarax Rathbun, I would do it. Um, if you had cover glasses, I'd say Aphiocarax Natareri. The summer is called the Dawn Tetra. They're complete psychopaths, so you need to have quite a lot of them so that the aggression stays in the group. Okay. And they love to jump. Right. So if you, you haven't got an open top tank, I'd get a big group of them. Mm. Um, if a Tetra was the same size as a blue whale, would it be able to beat blue whale up? Yes, because of the teeth. Yeah. So Paracaridon Axel Rowe, I know the cardinal Tetra. Yeah, yeah. Under the microscope, compared to body size, the teeth are the same proportion as that of a great white shark. Mm. Which is why, if you're a tiny, you know, macro invertebrate in the Amazon, no you're terrified. Yeah. Um, and tetras have also, like piranhas or the carisons, yeah. have got pharyngeal teeth. So these are rows of teeth down the throat. Oh. So you'll often notice, I'm sure you've seen it, your tetra will grab a granule of food, sort yeah. of ingest it in its mouth, spit it out. Yeah. And just, what they're doing is they're chewing it with the teeth in their throat. Oh, I just thought I didn't like the food. No, they'll chew it, mush it up, spit it out, take it in. That's the most interesting thing I've learned today. So you know when you see the classic sort of piranha feeding frenzy? Yeah. What they do is the larger adults go first, and the medium, and the juveniles. And they go in that pecking order so they don't actually accidentally bite each other and yeah. get eaten. Yeah. And they race in, and they use their really sharp front teeth to take off a chunk yeah. Then they swim away in a circle, and as they're swimming away in the circle, they're chewing it with their pharyngeal teeth. And then they come back around to take another piece. Wow. So if you had a giant neon tetra or, or cardinal yeah. tetra, so it, a great, it would have a, give it a great white. It would, it would be like the Meg, yeah. you know, teeth wise. Yeah. It would be awful. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> um, it's so interesting, isn't it? it? Is yeah. So like anything, if you're a, if you're a tiny little invertebrate, the world is a very very scary place, yeah. and yeah, the, the, these fish sort of when I explored their habitats in the wild they like to hang out near the vegetated margins and they do what you call drift picking so they sort of move out into the flow pick a passing morsel mm. go back you know it might be edible they've got to take a punt and if it is they start chewing it with their throat as they go back into cover so they're not exposed mm. so yeah there's a bit of so, fish dentals, yeah, yeah. dental dental Science for you. And the, will the botanicals kind of last forever? I guess the leaves will slowly decompose. Yeah, the, the harder things like the pods and the sort yeah. of bark will, uh, will last quite a while. Yeah. Because they've been soaking in water outside for months, they haven't been leaching tannins. Mm -hmm. I've been using some JBL black water extract to mm -hmm. top up the tannin. Mm -hmm. But you could use oak and beech leaves. Did you get any algae issues to start with? Uh, a little bit on the wood. Right. Um, because it, I think it had been outside, and yeah. but just siphoned it out. And you planted it with the kabomba straight away? Yeah. yeah. And then it, and did you buy it, was it submersed for them? It's, is it, 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 is a, a, an aquatic plant, or does it grow diverse? It is pretty much fully aquatic. Okay. Um, it can grow in very shallow water where the heads will sort of rise out the top a bit, but yeah. it doesn't like it. Um, yeah, so it came as bunches, and interestingly, um, mainly had aquatics, they get two varieties of this kabomba in. Mm. So one is called kabomba Fakata, which is the proper scientific name. Yeah. And one is listed as kabomba Pioensis, which is the old scientific name of kabomba Fakata. Right. However, Fakata is really purple red, mm. and the Pioensis is Orange. pink, pink colour, ah, which we've got yeah. in that tank. Ah, I can show you that in a sec. Yeah, yeah. And so I've got this, this nice red one. And under different lights, it can go different colours, but I'm just really pleased with it here. I think it looks looks natural. Fish seem happy. There's a little bit of algae here. There's a few sort of filamentous bits, but that just looks natural. You could put some otter sinkless in there to help clean up with that shrimp. Mm. Good. Any questions in the comments, I guess? Yeah, I, I, I hope this will encourage people to, you know, Two black phantoms. Yeah, and maybe have a go at doing something a bit more habitat style. Yeah. You know, this is quite a demanding plant. You could use other species. Uh, Heteranthera zostrifolia, the stargrass. Is that black, black Google or black phantom? And that's, yeah. I've got a photo of it growing through leaf litter in a black phantom habitat mm. in the Pantanal. Uh, it, near the Pantanal, sorry. There's one thing I would add to this. What is that? Blue, Blue angel fish. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
what is it? The customer's always right, accepting. No wrong. No, uh, accepting matters of taste is the other half of that phrase. Uh, okay, <laughs> there's no accounting for taste. Um, I mean, like I said, there's all sorts of fish you could add in here. And if you wanted to put blue angels in a tank like this, they'd outgrow it eventually. But... <laughs> they will outgrow it. But you know, I would love to do like a big version of this in a really big tank with loads of loads of Pantanal fishes. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's sort of a challenge because it's quite a demanding plant. Mm. But I've made it easy for myself by making it the sort of natural style mm. display and just seeing how it goes. Cool, man. So, Good. Right. So there you have it, guys. Uh, 60 centimetre black water planted biotope for black phantom tetras in this wonderful Oasi Scape 600 tank. Fantastic chicharos light. And uh, with the presence of George... I'm uh, happy to share it all with you, so thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. Cheerio. Yeah.